It's been a funny couple of years. We've had plague, flood, war, fire, and pestilence. You're not welcome, you fuckwit! Throughout that time, the earth has managed to survive. Australia is an old country. Our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have provided 60,000 years of continuous culture in a land that stands stoic against the ravages of industry and climate change. And you know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than why is the number 1111 and not 21, that question would have to be, Mark, is the Pinnacles Desert a proud monument to the resilience of the planet or does nature just have a propensity for knob jokes? Today, we're going to try and answer that question. So say hello to the Zorki 4K. In Russian, that means sharp-sighted because they weren't going to call it the Cataract 3000, were they? Or Cataract 3000 in the local vernacular. 4K, not because it came after the 1080p version. It's actually a modification of the fourth generation of Zorki cameras. The K here means it has a rewind lever rather than a crank knob. And yes, that's the second time that I have said knob in this video. Zorkis were around from about 1948 to 78. The serial number on this, beginning with 76, tells me that this one is 46 years old. Only eight years younger than me. And I think you'll agree that, uh, unlike me, this one's actually in really nice condition. So what can I say about this camera? It's a Soviet brick. You could throw it through the window of the Kremlin, smack a KGB apparatchik on the head with it, and you could still could probably take good pictures with it. Now, while Russian cameras have a reputation for poor quality, this one itself actually seems pretty solid and you really do have to hold it in your hand to feel the weight of it and enjoy the mechanical nature and the click of the shutter. It is a coupled rangefinder so you can focus it and it has a cloth shutter with a flash sync speed of only a 30th of a second. And I discovered that a little bit late with my first roll of film. The shutter itself is controlled with this knob here on the top. Film loading is awkward, but effective, uh, kind of like my dance moves after a couple of martinis. Now, for this trip, I paired it with three lenses. The Jupiter 8 is what this came with, um, a 50mm f2, and the main reason that I actually bought this camera. It's known for being both sharp but character-filled. But I also had with me a Jupiter 12, not the most imaginative name, but the 35mm f2.8 equivalent of the 50mm. But I also brought this jewel of a lens, the Voigtlander Super Wide Heliar 15mm. So it was time to take this beast out to the Pinnacles, two hours north of Perth, on the Death Race 2022 that is the Indian Ocean Drive. After an ostentatious display of my parking prowess, it was time to get my tog on.
The 50mm wasn't just a parallax pirate founding my framing on the yellow rocks, but at that point I was also starting to realise that the tight focal length just wasn't giving me the breadth that I needed to capture the desolation of the scene. Q, the 15mm Voigtlander, enabling a much more dramatic perspective on the phallic columns that is the Pinnacles. Now, science tells us that the pinnacles were formed from calcium-rich sand made by the crushed exoskeletons of ancient sea life, swept inland, forming hardened limestone pillars, and then the surrounding soft sand being eroded by 30,000 years of fire, wind, and rain. But hey, that's science, and who believes science? Far more likely, the great celestial spaghetti monster sprayed penises over the landscape like pornographic graffiti. If you look close enough, I bet that if you wander around the pinnacles, you can find Cthulhu and Kylie forever carved somewhere in the ancient ruins of one of those limestone pillars. But I digress. What of the photos? Well, actually, it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, I was shooting Agfa APX 400 for the first time, and as you can probably tell, it was kind of a blotchy grain fest. Now, whether that was poor developing in D76, or the fact that I probably underexposed the film by a stop, more on that in a moment, I don't know. I'm going to have to get a lot more familiar with this film for sure, not least because of the fact that uh, these were the first frames of a bulk roll that I have just purchased. As for the Zorki 4K, well, I thought I was shooting at a 500th of a second, but one of the frustrating things about the Zorki is that this shutter dial is incredibly finicky. 
my fat phalanges and geriatric eyes totally missed the mark so it was actually set to a thousandth of a second what does that mean in a 46 year old camera it's probably not super accurate anyway but at the same time i think that definitely contributed to some of the disappointment that i felt now without doubt the super wide shots were my favorite but even then you'll notice that the thread uh, of the uh, lens on the camera is just a bit off creating really quite a, an unpleasant vignette even with the lens shade being so tiny i had to do quite a bit of cropping just to recover it and of course that was at the cost of some framing and also more grain now i hope you've enjoyed uh, what you've seen uh, if you have like subscribe and comment and if you didn't like it well you don't have to be mean you know Rest assured, I will return another time, better equipped with both camera and knowledge, and once again take on this ancient photographic foe that is the Pinnacles. Cthulhu, you have been warned.